chapter 8 in Matthew. Chapter 8, verse 1, it says, When he has come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. He said, I will. He chose to do that. You know, and today everybody says, if it's God's will, I can be healed. But if not, I'll just be sick. Well, it says in uh, 3 John 2 that, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. It's God's will that you're in health. It's God's will that you're in health. So believe God's will. You know, people say, Oh, if bad happens to me, it must be God's will. Everybody is blaming God on all the calamity that's going on when God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. Whatever bad happened to you is not God's will. Stop blaming God. Let's go to Mark chapter 14. Mark 14 and verse 36 says... And he said, this is when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, Abba, Father, all the things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, what I will, nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Jesus Christ said, I don't want to hang on a, I don't want to be sacrificed. I don't want to go through this terrible tribulation that's set before me. But if that's your will, I'll do it. Let's go to chapter 15, verse 37. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. He gave up his life by his freedom of will. It says he gave up the ghost. He gave up his life for you and me. He had a choice. He could have got off that cross. He was in command of 12 legions of angels. He could have walked right off of that cross. He, by his freedom of will, gave his life for you and me. Let's go to John 4 real quick. John 4, verse 34 says, Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. And to finish his work. And that's what he did. He completed all the will of God and brought us salvation. Pretty neat. Uh, 530. 530. I can of mine own self do nothing. I can do nothing. So as I hear, I judge. But my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will. I seek not my own will. But the will of the Father that sent me. There's two wills here. There's Jesus Christ's will and decision. And he didn't seek his own will. He sought the Father's will. By his freedom of will, he sought the Father's will. Let's go to 638. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will. But the will of him that sent me. It's pretty clear here. Chapter 8. Verse 29, And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. And he spake these words, many believed on him. And he said to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you'll be doing the will of God. Your will will be God's will. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth, shall make you free. John 7, verse 16. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man do his will, he shall know the doctrine, 
whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. God always, Jesus Christ always sought God's glory. He always said, there is, call me master, there is no good master, there is no master but one. That's God. Jesus Christ glorified God, and that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to glorify God. He didn't go out there to glorify himself. You know, there's nowhere in the Word of God that says to pray to Jesus, and everybody prays to Jesus. How must that make him feel when he's trying to glorify God? Pray to God Almighty, our Heavenly Father, just like he did. Our Father, which art in heaven. Go to Acts 2. Verse 22 says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man. That's what it says. I didn't write the book. Don't get mad at me. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves know. He's a man. He did the word of God. He did the will of God. It was man that blew it, Adam, and it took man to legally redeem man by his freedom of will. I appreciate that. Jesus Christ is the most amazing person that ever lived on the face of the planet. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2.15 So what about us? 2 Timothy 2.15 I got to get there myself. It says Study to show thyself approved unto God. Well Jesus Christ was a man approved unto God and we know he knew the word of God. So what must we do to stand approved unto God? What by our freedom of will must we do? Well, if we want to know the Word of God, will of God, we got to know the Word of God. If we want to do God's will, we got to do His Word. God expects us to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. We find out the will of God by study. Then we do the will of God. The Word of God is the will of God. As we do the will of God, we manifest the power of God. Just as Jesus Christ, we know it's God's will for us to have freedom of will. And that's the only way he could do it. You know, the potential for evil is always there, but that's not God's fault. But he had to give us freedom of will. So, if you want to manifest the power of God by doing the will of God, it's your choice. God gave you the power to decide. Thank you.